Hi guys, so the Brexit party is no more. It is now the Reform UK party. They have their eyes set on Scotland because in May this year, there will be the Scottish elections for the parliament and they are hoping to pick up a few seats. Now, in order to do so, they need a leader in Scotland, someone to organize um, the election campaign. And this will be Michelle Ballantyne. Now, Michelle used to be a member of the Conservative Party and she's made some comments in the past which are, let me put it, interesting. Now, I want to show you this montage which was uploaded by my good friend Indy Truck Davy. Thanks to Davy for uploading this. I want to show you this montage of some of the comments she's made in the past and I want to explain her voting record as well. That's why I'm absolutely delighted that Michelle Ballantyne, MSP, has agreed to lead Reform UK Scotland. Thank you, Richard, and I'm delighted to take the reins here in Scotland. That is the reason in 2021 we need a government that is compassionate. It is fair that people on benefit cannot have as many children as they like. The transparency about how foreign aid is used is not good. It's caring. I would be quite happy if government had nothing to do with the running of the NHS, quite frankly. Every word begins with a C, and the end product begins with a C. Conservatives, we are the people who really care. And that's why I'm absolutely delighted that Michelle Ballantyne, MSP, has agreed to lead Reform UK Scotland. OK, so um, let's have a look at Michelle Ballantyne's Wikipedia page. So just to go from the top, it says she's a politician who's a member of the Scottish Parliament for the South Scotland region and the leader of Reform UK Scotland. Now, there are some political controversies surrounding Michelle and her behaviour. So during a meeting of the Scottish Parliament's Social Security Committee, Ballantyne claimed that there's no such thing as a bedroom tax, disagreeing that uh, restrictions to benefits are equivalent to paying of tax. She also said um, she also criticised the SNP's record on healthcare within a speech to in the Scottish Parliament. Ballantyne said that she was quite happy if the Scottish government had no role in running the NHS in Scotland. Now, this is anti-devolution. It's not that she said. She's, she's quite happy that the SNP have no role in running the SNP, uh, the, uh, the NHS in Scotland. She didn't want the Scottish government running the NHS. So she would prefer that Westminster ran the NHS in Scotland, not the Scottish people. OK, now she's made some ridiculous comments and um, uncaring comments about the poor, about people on welfare. Which is interesting because if we look at her voluntary work, it says here Ballantyne is a, is a patron of the food bank, of a food bank in Penicluck. Now, how can you be someone who is donating to a food bank but would prefer people to remain poor? What I'm talking about here is let's have a look at her voting record. So this is... Uh, a bill that was put forward by the SNP, it's called uh, Achieving a Fairer Scotland. So in this they talk about how um, universal credit, this uh, two-child um, two, two child cap, the rape clause, things like this have to be resolved and if the Scotland needs to do more to tackle inequality and poverty. And they also agree that universal credit is not the, the way out. So it says here that um, the SNP voted 51 for it, independents voted, um, one of them voted against, or no vote. The Labour Party, 13 voted for it, 10 had no vote. The Green Party voted for it. And the, um, the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party, Michelle abstained from this vote. Now you would think that someone who'd be interested in dealing with child poverty or universal the problems of universal credit because you see it every day in the food bank you would think you would vote for this bill but she she abstained on it this is uh, another bill it's um, the impact of the uk government's welfare cuts and universal credit on poverty so this is more um, in regards to poverty itself and this bill talks about how the universal credit, um, so it says the UK government 
assurances given by the UK government that universal credit would not be uh, would not cut incomes. Some low income families are exposed to uh, expected to lose on average uh, an average of two hundred pounds a month. Uh, further notes that the uh, appalling two child limit has already reduced the income of 3,800 families in Scotland and this number is set to grow year on year and result in a £92 million cut for families by 2020-2021. So how did she vote on this? Well, she voted against this. Then we have another one. We have this one on universal credit. So this... Um, so it says here that the Parliament agrees that universal credit, the two-child limit and the benefits cap should be scrapped in Scotland and across the UK, along with the abhorrent rape clause, the benefit sanctions re uh, regime and the bedroom tax. Notes estimate that the UK government's social security spending will reduce by £3.7 3 billion pounds th by the next year. This was, um, this was conducted in 2019. So how did she vote? Uh, well, the SNP voted for it, Liberal Democrats voted against it, and Michelle voted against it. If you are someone who donates to a food bank, you would think that you would see firsthand the impact of universal credit the, the impact of child poverty, and you would try to fix that. You, as an elected member of the Scottish Parliament, would say, I want to fix these problems. I see the impact every day. We cannot tolerate this poverty. This poverty should end. Food banks exist because the government does, isn't doing its job. There shouldn't be poverty. We should try to eliminate poverty. Food, a food bank is a stopgap measure. Government should eliminate it, should eliminate poverty. So you would think that when there are measures to do that, she would vote for that. But instead she voted against that. I can't get my head around it. Now she's going to run um, the Reform UK party in Scotland. Are they going to pick up seats? I don't know. Um, they don't seem to be interested in returning uh, Scotland to the European Union, uh, becoming a member of the European Union, because it's the ex-Brexit party, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they're still on the side of Brexit. And she doesn't want to um, support devolution because she had said that the Scottish people should not be in charge of the NHS. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons you ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?